Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 38. Yes, why, why God chosen two persons to receive Christ in this passage? And then we see two people are there. One is Simeon. And then second is Anna. How they receive Christ? And we see in verse 25, Simeon is righteous, and yeah. then he devoted and the Holy Spirit upon him, yeah. in verse 25. And then again, we see in verse 37, we see about Anna, which departed not from the temple. He's always praying in the temple, in verse 37. And then we see in, in verse 38 how he did. He looked for redemption in Jerusalem. He is looking for redemption in verse 38. We see in this passage how is human heart prepared to receive Christ for who he is. As it is the season of Christmas, uh, just I just want to think about ourselves, how we prepare to receive Christ in this season. Because of many people, right? Many people celebrate uh, drinking alcohol and here and there they celebrate for, how to say, uh, just for happy yeah. in this Christmas session. Some people, especially in uh, our chain people and some people, okay, most in our country also, whether they are believer or not, mm. they are trying to receive this Christmas session, everyone enjoying this Christmas session. They are celebrating the Christmas, but for what purpose they celebrate this Christmas? They don't know. Some are drunker like this. Yeah. That's what in this morning, Just I just want to just uh, share something about these two persons. How they prepare to receive Christ. Yeah. If we see in God prepare a person to receive Christ, by steering, launching a consolation and redemption that can only come from Christ only. We see God has prepared Simeon and Anna that in that way. Let me see in verse 25, we see Simeon, he's looking for consolation of Israel in verse 25. He's looking for consolation of Israel the same way Anna, okay? He Nay, not departed from the temple with fasting and prayer. Why he is not departed from the temple? Because of he want to receive Christ, and he is what praying and fasting, fasting and prayer day and night. He want to receive Christ. The same way, Simeon also he is waiting for consolation of Israel. In verse twenty-five, that's what we will see. God prepared a second coming for the same way how we prepare for his second coming also. We see in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28, Thou shalt waiting he will be received in verse uh, see. That's what we see. God prepared a heart of people to recognize and to receive Christ, launching of consolation and redemption. You see, he is consolation of Israel in verse 25, chapter 2, verse 25, we see, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like they both a drop upon him, and then, sorry, in verse 25, okay, Luke chapter 2, verse 25, and before there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, and waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Because he is waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the second word is coming in, in him, the Holy Spirit was upon him. Because of waiting on God, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Because of waiting consolation of Israel, the Holy Spirit was upon him. It was in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1 to 2. Let me read just Isaiah 
chapter 4P. I want to read verse 1 and 2. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, say your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for he had received of the Lord's hand double for all her sin. What is the consolation of Israel? We have to see this one. What is the consolation of Israel? Consolation of Israel is application of the tenderness of God to his people. Again, consolation of God is restoration to everything in our path in the Lord. Again, this consolation is heavenly father tender, mercy for his children. This consolation is heavenly father tender mercy for his children. Same way, Simeon is looking for consolation of Israel and found in Christ Jesus. Beautiful passage. Because Simeon he is waiting for consolation. It is found in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In no other. Amen. Same way Amen. in this passage, this session, as we are going to celebrate Christmas session, right? How we receive and then we see Jesus Christ is the consolation of the Father upon the Jew and Gentile. Not only Jew, Gentile also. <laughs> Jesus is the consolation of what the Father of open on the Jew and Gentile. That's so we see Jesus Christ's divine consolation in covering all our poor sin, our failure, and fear and shame and doubt covered by Jesus Christ. He is the one who covered our doubt. He is the one who covered our sin. He is the one who covered our shame. Again, we see I, this scripture is fulfilled in Isaiah chapter 49, as well 49 verse 30 is fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Isaiah chapter 30, 49 verse 30 is fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Again, we see in the life of Anna, he looked for redemption of Israel. He is looking for redemption in Israel. Redemption, he is looking for redemption in Jerusalem. Redemption is used in the gospel only. One, we'll see Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 68. In this gospel, Redemption is just only one in chapter one, verse sixty-eight. If we that's what just I want to share something in this morning, how our heart to receive Christ. We have seen these two passage, Simeon one in honor, the way he prepared to receive Christ. It 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 is uh, is there any difference between them? How did they receive to receive Christ? This is what this morning a little bit I would just want to share is whether we are outside of cry and close with him, whether we are inside of cry, let us long for him more like more than before. It is very important for us in this occasion, in this time. There's a lot of prepare ourselves how we celebrate the Christmas. This what I just want to what, um, share about these two persons. Thank you. Uh, what about uh, Matthew chapter 3? Matthew chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Matthew 3, verse 1. Chapter 3? Yeah, one, chapter okay, 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. In those days, John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And then it's a real interesting thing, because if you go back to um, Isaiah chapter 40, 
that's the passage that Brother Thang was just looking at that Matthew quotes. So John the Baptist in Isaiah chapter 40 was the fulfillment of that prophecy written about in Matthew. So it's Isaiah 40, um, chapter 40, verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So, Again, it's that it's that uh, preparation for the Lord that Brother Thang was talking about, um, and in, here in Isaiah, um, he, he he almost uses a metaphor because he he's talking about making straight the desert, make straight in the desert a highway, and so back back in those days, um, if there was an announcement of a king that would be coming through your particular town, there would be people that would come ahead of that king and they would make sure that the road was fit and that it was okay for them to, that, you know, for royalty to, to go through and to drive over all the bumps, potholes, whatever, they would try to fill it all up. And this is, I think, is really a beautiful picture of, um, of our heart. And then, and then back in Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist making people ready to receive um, Jesus Christ. Um, and then, of course, in, um, at the end of that, the, the ultimate um, uh, example of humility um, in John chapter 3, John the Baptist said, uh, he must, um, I must decrease, but he must increase. Or he must increase, but I must decrease. So... And then um, back in Matthew chapter 3, um, we see a little bit more about John the Baptist. Um, it says, now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers, who warned you to flee the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And you look back here, um, Back in, in verse 8, where um, John says, Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. You go back to Simeon and Anna in Luke chapter 2, and it said that, that they, they, the Holy Spirit was upon them. So you can be sure that they, they were repentant, and that they didn't take for granted um, the fact that their Savior was coming. I really like the description that the Bible gives us about John. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. So he's being described as a righteous, devout man filled with the Holy Spirit. I just thought that was a great description of, of a man. And, you know, um, what a legacy for us to leave behind, you know, for us to be known that way. If, our, if, if one day our grandchildren are reading about us, and, and, and they say that about us. You know, oh, my grandfather was a just man. My, my, my father was a man full of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's, um, 
That's a great legacy to leave behind. Not only that, he was ready for the coming of Jesus. And today we have the same promise, really. Jesus is coming back, and, and we too should be ready for his coming. Yeah.